The topic for this video is genitourinary pathology with a focus on renal tumors. We'll begin with two cases. They're both similar, and the histories are similar. One's a 59-year-old male with a renal mass, and the other's a 52-year-old male with a renal mass. So let's go to the glass slides. So the first thing you'll notice from low power is that it has sort of a lobulated or multi-nested type of growth pattern and it's set within this fibrous tissue which appears to represent a capsule. Now here we are on the 10x objective and there are several things that you'll notice. Number one, the thing that stands out the most is that we have this epithelioid neoplasm that's cohesive and the cells have abundant cytoplasm but the cytoplasm is very clear, what we say is optically clear. And the other thing that stands out from this magnification is you've got this delicate capillary network running around the tumor cells. So these are all clues. Now this is a 10x objective and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the thing is, at least based on the camera's optics, we're not really making out much in the way of, of nucleoli with it within this magnification. Now we're on the 40x objective and here we can actually begin to make out small nucleoli within some of the tumor cells. But notice that overall, there is some degree of pleomorphism. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller, but it's not on the high end of pleomorphism. So the differential diagnosis for most of your renal cell carcinomas are going to be your top three. Number one is clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Number two is papillary renal cell carcinoma. And number three would be a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. What puts this into a clear-cut clear cell renal cell carcinoma is that they, they have what we call true optically clear cytoplasm. And that essentially represents clearing out of the lipids and glycogen from tissue processing. If you were to look at one of these tumors on, say, a touch prep, where it's stained with a water-based stain, you'll actually see that it's got a lot of lipid within the cytoplasm. But after processing, it's washed away. So what makes this clear cell as well as it has that delicate capillary network. It lacks any papillary architecture that we notice from low, low magnification. And it lacks the prominent so-called plant cell membranes that you'll see within a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. So this is a clear cell renal cell carcinoma and the nuclear grade is going to be a grade 2. So let's move to the next case. So here's the second case, and kind of a similar look from a low power magnification. You can kind of make out a nested or kind of loose, loosely formed nests set within a very hypervascular background. We have uh, venous sized blood vessels here, but most of what we're seeing are these delicate arborizing um, chicken wire, I guess you could call it, like mic microvasculature. So very delicate microvasculature. And even from this magnification, you can make out clear cell change within within the cells. Now here we are once again on the 10x objective. It's not particularly striking, but as you look around, you can make out, number one, a little more pleomorphism. Some of them are a little are slightly larger than the others. We have some binucleation. And you can start to make out from the 10x objective some nucleoli. And that's going to be important, so let's go a little bit higher. Now we're on the 40x objective, and here, compared to the previous case, number one, you can see a little bit more in the way of pleomorphism, multinucleation, variation in the nuclear size, a little bit more in the way of nuclear membrane irregularities, but we can clearly see much more conspicuous nucleoli here. So this is going to be a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, and this is going to be nuclear grade 3. The diagnosis is clear cell renal cell carcinoma, grade 2 in the first case and grade 3 in the second case. So clear cell renal cell carcinoma is the most common of the histologic subtypes of renal cell carcinoma, representing somewhere around two-thirds, we'll say 70% of renal cell carcinomas. The history in most of these is going to be an adult, males more common than females, and the most common clinical presentation is going to be hematuria. Renal cell uh, carcinomas of the clear cell type are known for being pretty resistant against systemic chemotherapy for more advanced stage disease. The tyrosine kinase inhibitors may improve this, but in the end, around one-third of patients will develop uh, recurrence or metastatic disease, and around 50% will die of renal cell carcinoma. 
The characteristic gross findings are, number one, this yellow discoloration that you can appreciate here in the upper left and also here on the picture on the right. And around that, you've got cystic change and lots of necrosis. So this represents hemorrhage and necrosis within the tumor. And notice this yellow appearance that is from the lipids that get washed out during tissue processing. Again, giving you that clear cell look after tissue processing. The characteristic features are, number one, it's epithelial, so it's cohesive. It has abundant cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is clear, optically clear, meaning completely cleared out. Occasionally you'll see some cells with a more foamy cytoplasm, but for the most part you're going to see this optically clear cytoplasm, a delicate capillary network running around it, and as they become higher grade, they still tend to maintain that arborizing microvasculature, but they can definitely lose that clear cell appearance that you see in the lower grade tumors, so they can become more eosinophilic. The clear cell renal cell carcinomas in particular can undergo sarcomatoid dedifferentiation, so you can see spindle cell growth with higher grade tumors. So traditionally we grade these using the Furman nuclear grading system, which takes into account the nuclear size, shape, and prominence of nucleoli. And it's really the nucleoli that were a, a foundation to that system. They can be graded from one to four, and the way I would view it in a two-tier system is low grade is grade one and two, and high grade is grade three and four. And in practical application, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find occasional scattered cells that are higher nuclear grade, but you really wanna base it on a, on a broader area of the tumor, not just scattered tumor cells. So grade one, the nuclei are small, they're uniform, and they lack nucleoli. That means you do not see them on the, on the 10X objective and when going to the 40X objective, you still cannot make out prominent nucleoli or conspicuous nucleoli. Grade two means you're not really making out the nucleoli on the 10X objective, but upon 40X objective magnification, you can make out nucleoli. And grades three and four, you can see them from the 10X objective, and the difference between three and four is the degree of nuclear pleomorphism with grade four, it's going to look almost more anaplastic. You're going to get multinucleation or multilobulated nuclei. You'll know grade four when you see it. Now, in my experience, most of these tumors end up being either a grade two or three. For me, grade one is pretty uncommon because I think if you look hard enough, you'll find areas with at least some nucleoli, and uh, grade four is also less common. So here's a picture of nuclear grade one. Notice they're relatively uniform. Occasional nucleoli can be seen, but in, in terms of the overall population of cells, most of them are lacking conspicuous nucleoli. Grade two, now they become more numerous, more conspicuous on higher, higher power uh, examination. Grade three, even more conspicuous, and as you move to grade four, it becomes much more pleomorphic. So you get multi-lobulated, multi-nucleated, much more anaplastic appearing cells. So the key points are, number one, most people aren't measuring the size of the nuclei. It's really based on the presence of nucleoli starting at 10x and then going to higher magnification if necessary. And if you're on the fence, generally you're going to be on the fence between a grade 2 and a grade 3. What you can do is go to higher power and look for mitoses. If you have a hard time finding mitotic figures, you're probably best sticking uh, the tumor into the lower grade category of grade two. If mitoses are more readily identified, then it's best to put the tumor into a high grade category or a grade three. In terms of immunohistochemistry, most of these cases you're not gonna need immunohistochemistry. You may need it for a metastatic tumor of unknown primary, if it happens to be uh, renal, hap happens to be in your differential diagnosis. But what I find the most useful is cytokeratin-7. If you view your top three, remember we talked about the top three in terms of what's most common. You have clear cell renal cell carcinoma, papillary renal cell carcinoma, and chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Only the clear cell among those top three is negative for cytokeratin-7. The papillary renal cell carcinomas, especially if they're type 1, we'll talk about that in, a, in another video, 
are generally going to be strong and diffusely positive for cytokeratin 7. And chromophobe renal cell carcinomas are pretty uniformly positive for cytokeratin 7. Of course, there's always exceptions. In terms of PAX2 and PAX8, that's really more useful if you're considering in the setting of a of metastatic disease, you're considering a renal cell because it just tells you that it's coming from the genitourinary system. And AE1, AE3, and low molecular weight cytokeratins you can use, but I, they're pretty nonspecific. When I was a resident, the three main stains that we used were CD10, EMA, and Vimentin. And it was said that, that clear cell renal cell carcinoma was one, one of the very few tumors that expresses both keratin and Vimentin. Most of the time, Vimentin is thought to be seen in, in your mesenchymal tumors. But in reality, CD10 is really nonspecific, as is EMA. And of course, we know Vimentin is pretty nonspecific. So here's a question. Which chromosome is altered in most cases of clear cell renal cell carcinoma? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And the answer is chromosome 3P. And you definitely should know this one for the boards because this is the location of the von Hippel-Lindau gene on 3P25.3. I don't think, for the most part, the boards are going to get into the details. Just know that the von Hippel-Lindau gene is on 3P. And there are various types of mutations and promoter hypermethylation that can alter the expression of the von Hippel-Lindau gene. The next question, you are evaluating a renal tumor and you have a differential diagnosis between a clear cell renal cell carcinoma and a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. You find that the tumor is diffusely positive for cytokeratin 7. Which diagnosis does this finding support? And as we just talked about, that would be a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. The clear cell renal cell carcinoma should be negative. So this ends the video for cases 1 and 2.